Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasha. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Rockstar Chronicles. Uh, my new book, featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest music legends the world will ever know. It's available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Well, John Lodge is passionate about keeping the Moody Blues music alive. And John and his 10,000 Light Years band provide a unique opportunity to continue to experience the magic of the Moody Blues. The release of his live album, The Royal Affair, and after, and touring is planned for 2022. The Royal Affair and after was released January 14th this year. On CD and digital download, the limited edition blue vinyl will be released on January 28th of this year. Please welcome bass guitarist, singer, songwriter, producer, longtime member of Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, the Moody Blues, John Lodge, to interviewing the legends. Hello, John. Hi, Ray. How are you? We're doing good. Bit nippy here in Florida. You're in Barbados. Lucky you. <laughs> uh, Florida, Florida is great as well. I enjoy Florida. It is. It is. And you guys play here a lot. Yeah. Uh, my, 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 uh, I work a lot. In, uh, we were rehearsing in uh, Naples a couple of weeks ago for, mm-hmm. uh, for the tour. That was good. Uh, the studio, a little studio I use is in Naples, and mm-hmm. uh, um, my keyboard player, Alan Hewitt, musical right. director, is from Florida. Billy Ashbrook, my drummer, is from Florida. So we got a great connection. First of all, I'd like to say my condolences about the passing of Graham Edge. Uh, you know, he was... Very popular in this community in Bradenton, Florida. He lived about 15, 20 minutes from me. And um, what I understand, he was a great guy. Never got to meet Graham, but I understand he was a wonderful person. Yeah, Graham. I I met Graham first when I was uh, 16 in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. He played drums for a guy called Jerry Levine and the Avengers. And I used to watch uh, Graham play on a Saturday afternoon he'd got a gig there and Ray Thomas and I used to go and watch him and it's strange to think four years later we were going to be in the same group band and spend the next 50 odd years as friends, musicians and mates Uh, so it was quite quite an incredible journey and I was just with Graham just before he passed away uh, Mm -hmm. Uh, went up to Bradenton to visit and uh, we sat together, had a few laughs, a few tears, a uh, mm-hmm. few memories. And, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and Graham has been a great supporter, obviously, of the Moody Blues, but of me as well. And mm-hmm. uh, I said to him, Graham, uh, let's go in the studio and record you uh, narrating your own poetry from days of future past. Right. Because he's never done that. Mm -hmm. So I went to the studio and I said, Graham, you're always going to have a space space on my concert where your vocal uh, narration is going to go over the speakers saying, breathe deep, the gathering gloom. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love that. It, 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 those words put you in a trance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I say that on stage, you know, close your eyes, pretend Graham's on stage with me and gently uh, drift downstream. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Royal Affair and After, um, it's out now. You know, you don't see too many live albums anymore, which mm. I really miss because I love live albums. And this one's a good one. You got, um, not only do you have Graham on the album, but you have uh, John Davison from Yes uh, doing Nights in White Satin and Ride My Seesaw. Great voice there. Yeah, I, I, I you, the whole white. I, I recorded the concert in Las Vegas in 2019. Okay. And uh, obviously, we, no one knew about COVID then. Uh, and when we were all locked down, I thought, you know, 
we're missing live concerts are missing uh, performing them mm -hmm. and an audience hasn't got the opportunity to go to a concert so i thought what a better to do i'm going to visit this album mm -hmm. uh, and see what it's like and i loved it i i thought uh, all the guys in my band play extremely wonderful uh, and the emotion in their playing i think comes out uh, on the album and uh, I, when i thought well, yep yeah, 180 gram vinyl as well mm -hmm. i thought yes but with all the photographs and information on the sleeve uh, so people who could hopefully sit at home or with friends or whatever uh, and live uh, a live concert experience it, it's a it's a fun album it really is yes. and uh john does a great job on uh nice and white satin by the way that's all that's not an easy song to sing i've heard some versions of of it usually on prog radio and and uh not too many of those other singers impressed me but this this one was very very good well done yeah, he was, he really he really took it hard, John, and wanted to make it exactly his song, his interpretation, but still keeping the emotion of the original, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and Alan Hewitt did a fantastic uh, uh, job on the string arrangements, and I've got. Uh, a cellist called Jason Charbonneau from Detroit and he accompanies me now in the band and he plays incredible cello uh, on on the night you want setting. It's a great album and I, I give it five stars and s some of the tracks I loved uh, Sunset was an incredible track. I love the way you guys put that one together Um it's the single you got a single out gemini dream is actually out as a single correct yeah it's out as a single and i don't know where where it's appearing in the u.s uh in the uk i know it's into the charts so mm -hmm. i'm pleased with that <laughs> you know uh but there, there is a lot of energy on that track uh i uh for the whole album uh actually for the whole concert I said to my uh, drummer, Billy Ashburn, uh, mm -hmm. I said, Billy, what I want to do is really get the energy and the driving force from the bass drum and the bass. And I want uh, that that sound, that energy uh, to propel the songs. I said, I want to keep all the orchestrations like the Moody's, but I want it to be like 2022 more energy mm -hmm. and uh, like it like the 1812 overture mm -hmm. you know uh and i think billy did that for me and uh yeah i'm really pleased well the the album starts out with stepping in a slide zone very cool guitar intro on that one and a great song of course thank you yeah yeah the, yeah it's uh that's written um in for for the octave album mm -hmm. and right. uh, i remember writing that in a basement in <laughs> los angeles can you believe <laughs> next to the, in a basement next to ironing boards irons and washing <laughs> machines and everything why and not I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought, that's it stepping in a slide so that word that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> that's funny and of course, you wrote a lot of those classic Moody Blues tunes, uh, "Ride My Seesaw," of course, which John <laughs> sings on. And my my favorite, I think, that you write is "Isn't Life Strange," because it's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about writing that song. I mean, what what sparked you know your um, imagination yeah, on that track? It, 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 it's a strange story, really, because mm -hmm. a friend of ours uh, was a, a songwriter called Lionel Bart. Mm -hmm. Lionel wrote uh, uh, Oliver, you know, the musical. Sure. He, he also wrote n nearly all the original English rock and roll uh, uh, songs mm -hmm. uh, for Cliff Richard, Thomas Steele, loads of people. 
and I was at his house one day, and he's got this baby grand piano mm -hmm. uh, called a, a Daneman. And they said to me, John, you, you should get one of these because uh, there's only two pedals, but mm -hmm. the harmonics of the piano are fantastic. So I, I, <laughs> I did. I bought one and smuggled it into my house <laughs> <laughs> before, before my wife saw the size of it. <laughs> and uh, one day I, I was having dinner uh, in the kitchen at my home with a couple of friends. And I heard this melody in my head. And I said, you'll have to excuse me. And, and I went into the, the, the room where my piano was. And uh, I wrote the basics of Is Life Strange There? And mm -hmm. I, I, it all came together in like 15 minutes, I think. And uh, <laughs> I went back into the kitchen and said to my wife and my friends i think i've just written a new song but <laughs> i it, it may be the wine um, <laughs> but i'll i'll find out in the morning because the, the morning is really the dawn of when you find out if you've written a song or not and when i woke up in the morning i sat there and played the song and i thought mm. oh yeah, isn't life strange? Yeah. I only had those w lyrics at that time. The whole song was, isn't life strange? Isn't life strange? <laughs> and I thought I'd better write some more, more lyrics. But they did come, the lyrics come straight away. Yeah. And in, interesting on the original record, if you hear Mike Pinder uh, played a, a, a pedal harmonium mm -hmm. on the record, mm -hmm. and if you listen, uh, to the original, you can actually hear the pedals in the background because you have to pump them to get air into right. the bells or the harmonium. But for the new version, I wanted to be, as I said, more like the 1812 overture. Sure. I wanted the quiet bits to be really quiet and the big bits to be enormous. And yeah. uh, I think the band... Uh, did that for me. Um, guitar playing from uh, Duffy King is phenomenal on that record. You know, the Moody's were so in tune to life <laughs> and what life has to offer and, and why we're on this planet and all those good things. It's always been the Moody's, like the Beatles, always had the same type of messages in, in their lyrics as well. You know, and that's what made you such a special band. You know, besides, you guys were all great musicians, of course, but the lyrics were so powerful. Well, we, we you know, we said at the when, when we had our very first meeting, we sat around, sat around this little coffee table mm -hmm. in the studio, uh, and in actual fact, we still got the coffee table. <laughs> it's like it's and lucky. <laughs> it really is a lucky. If it, if it could have a, a tape machine on it and a camera, <laughs> it'd be a world history film. I can tell you. <laughs> but um, we sat around and they said, you know. Whatever songs we write about, it, it, it's it's got to be English blues, how we grew up, mm -hmm. where we lived, and right. what our thoughts were, were. And we said, you know, we need to be able to live with it, what we're writing about right. for the next with the next twenty years. Never knowing it was fifty, but, <laughs> but we thought we've got to be uh, convinced that we can. Don't hide behind the lyric mm -hmm. uh, later on in life, and mm -hmm. uh, I think we kept true to that. It's amazing, you know. I talked, I did talk to Michael Pinder, and I've talked to Ray Thomas uh, <laughs> in the past, and you know, of course, they gave me the gist of uh, "Nights in White Satin" and how that came about, and was actually a demo tape with you know orchestra on one side, you guys on the other side, and that's how it all got started, I guess which was, you know, really a cool story, how that all happened, you know? Yeah. We recorded it first for the BBC. Yeah. Because the BBC, you, you had, they had a needle policy mm -hmm. where they could only play, uh, I think, like 20 minutes of records a day. Right. And everything else had to be re-recorded or recorded. 
so I went, went into their studio and recorded Nights in White Satin first on two-track machine. Right. And it's really interesting from my point of view and all of Moody's point of view because we all knew our own parts. Mm-hmm. We were playing for the song, but we'd never heard it as a complete unit. Mm-hmm. And when we sat in the uh, sound room, in mixing room, and listen to the two track. I think we looked all at each other, other and we were slightly stunned because <laughs> it was so different to what yeah. everyone was uh, else was doing. Yeah, and it was like four and a half minutes long. Yeah, <laughs> what an amazing song, you know. Mm. Uh, the last time we chatted. You did 10,000 Light Years Ago, which I loved. And one of the favorite album covers of all time, by the way, especially with oh. all the Mars stuff going on and everything. How are you going to follow follow that one up when you start, when you do a, a non-live album and get back in the studio again? Or when will you go in the studio again and, and make a regular album again? I, I, I've, I've been writing and recording nonstop to good. be honest, uh, I've good, recorded good. another four songs, but it's where it takes me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm really enjoying the journey w- with the the new album, sure. Royal Affair, uh, and uh, see where that takes me. I've been in the studio recording nonstop uh, for the last two months, really. Uh, so uh, there's lots of things I'm doing right now, mm-hmm. and... Uh, I hope it's going to be a great surprise uh, for everyone. You know, I mm-hmm. found I found a way of recording which I really enjoy, really like. Going into the studio it, uh, uh, at the beginning was fun and great and instant. Right. And uh, in the last fifteen years, it wasn't because everything was computer generated and. Uh, the creativity part for me disappeared mm-hmm. because create when you create something, you've got to capture it there and then instant creation. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did in the Moody Blues. Right. But by the time we got to 78 track recordings and computers, it was like, well, play the part. And it's like, yeah, you don't play the part. You create the part. Mm-hmm. And if you've got to play it four or five times, you miss the creative. It becomes exactly. comes like a, a facsimile. But right. nowadays, I'm doing all that stuff in my own studio and I'm passing it on to Alan, um, my you know keyboard musical director, and he works his magic in his studio. And I send it to Billy. Ashburn, a drummer, he works his drum magic mm-hmm. in his studio. And we put it all together on files. And then eventually uh, we mix it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's instant creativity, which right. I love. I, I love that. Another song I really enjoy that you did during lockdown in these crazy times and I want to mention that because it, your son is on there. Uh, it's it's got uh, your wife is on there. Uh, I think John Davison is also doing some backup uh, vocals on that. Uh, and I think your was it your daughter that kind of managed the project here? Yeah, it's, yeah. She manages. Well, I, when I re, I arrived in Florida mm-hmm. March the ninth for my grandson's 11th birthday right which was march the 14th march the 12th we got locked down i never ever saw him for three months uh, so we never celebrated birthdays and um i was sitting uh, in my uh, condo in naples mm-hmm. uh, with two guitars and i thought what am i going to do i'm locked down here <laughs> so uh, uh, amazon and sweetwater music thank you uh, I hope they recognize that. Uh, I ordered all these bits and bobs and built a studio uh, in one of the rooms, in the mm. bedroom, uh, put the microphone in the wardrobe and mm-hmm. all the padding, 
And I sat down and started writing songs. And the first song I wrote, I wrote was in these crazy times. And uh, I started, I learned garage band. I can't believe that. <laughs> I learned garage band and I recorded uh, the, uh, the guitar, the drums and the uh, keyboards uh, on garage band and put the vocal on. And I thought, I need some backing vocal. <laughs> and I said to my wife, I'm going to teach you. She's never sung before. I said, I'm going to teach you the chorus line. Uh, and you've got to record it. So she stood in the wardrobe, <laughs> one does, and she recorded the, uh, the chorus line. And then I sent it to John Davison and said, John, um, do uh, some harmonies for me. Mm -hmm. And he did. And then I sent the files to my son and I said, play some uh, uh, guitar on this lead guitar, which he did. Uh, and uh, he said, well, I get it all back. And I sent it to my uh, guy who mixes everything for me, Rain Nesbitt. Uh, and uh, we got this song. And I sent it to my daughter. I'll, I said, what do you think? She mm -hmm. said, release it. <laughs> and, we re <laughs> and we released it. And I think it got to like number three in the heritage chart, you know. So uh, thank you, Garage Band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds a little bit like a John Lennon song to me for some reason, you know? Uh, uh, I, John Lennon was my favorite. Well, I better mm -hmm. not say that. Uh, was one of my favorite uh, songwriters. And mm -hmm. uh, I like the way he put over songs. He, he lent, lent its way to how I like putting over a song. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you, you know, it's it, it comes really from the, the downbeat of the song, I think. Right. Uh, I don't really ever investigate why things work. Yeah. But, uh, I think it is from the downbeat, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. I love it. It's a great tune, you know. Thank you very much. Be Thank beautiful you. song. Um, I'm going to mention Ray Thomas because I had such a wonderful interview with him way back when. I think it was December of 2014 when we chatted. And we chatted a lot about you because you guys <laughs> were – Actually working together, uh, you asked him uh, to, to write a song, I think, uh, for his grandson or for for Henry. Was that your grandson? Or Yeah, yeah. I, wrote, I wrote this song for my uh, grandson. Right. Uh, uh, called Simply Magic. Mm -hmm. And when, when I was playing it on my acoustic guitar, I thought, you know, it's perfect for Ray. We haven't worked with together since Ray had left the Moody Blues. Uh, and I rang Ray up and said, Ray, I've got this song. I really need you to play flute on it. Uh, and I went round to his house, played the uh, song to him, and he got a flute out, and we worked together. I uh, mean, talked about old times, of course. Uh, and then we went to the studio and recorded it. Uh, and while I was in the studio recording with Ray, Ray said to me, what about Mike? So I thought, yeah, of course. So I rang Mike up and said, will you play Mellotron on it as well? Right. And, and so he did. So it was great. And it was great to, uh, you know, I first met Ray when I was sort mm -hmm. of 14. That's and, cool. Uh, uh, and I actually taught him to drive a car as well. Really? Not very, <laughs> not very good, I think. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, so uh, we lived together. Uh, we lived in this... Uh, um, Ray wrote Legend of the Mind, of course. And, mm -hmm. uh, we were sharing a, uh, an apartment in, in London, and uh, Ray woke up one morning and said, Hey, Rocker. He always called me Rocker. Mm -hmm. Hey, Rocker, listen, listen to this. And he sang me, Timothy Leary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that was it, you know. So uh, we've, we've had a lot of fun over the years. In actual fact, we used to, we 
had a band called El Riot and the Rebels. Right. And uh, we used to play in this uh, uh, town hall uh, every month or every couple of months. And we were always top of the bill. And we went there one week and the promoter said, oh, hey, guys, I'm ever so sorry. You're not top of the bill. We've got this band from Liverpool who've just signed a record mm -hmm. contract. And they've just released a record this week called Long Me Do. <laughs> and, and it was the Beatles. So, yeah. the, so that was on 1963 or so. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so or 62, whenever that was. But, uh, and I've got a photograph from that night, uh, the Beatles and us. And so, uh, yeah, great memories with Ray. Great memories. I'm going to read a, a, a quick excerpt from that interview with me and Ray Thomas, because he was so excited to be working with you again. That's, that's what I got out of it. He says, um, I work with John a couple of weeks before Christmas on an album he's making. And I was in the studio with him. I've known John since he was 14 years of age and I was 15. He doesn't like people to know that we're so close in age. So John lies. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That that was Ray's sense of humor. Ray always had a fantastic sense of humor. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what keeps people together, you know. Uh, exactly. From 15, 14 to 75, I think Ray was, whatever, you know, 70. It, it, it's got what keep you know, that humor. Uh, he had always had a smile on his face, and uh, he was always going to do something different, which you always went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> was always great. I remember once we, he, he had a Mini Cooper car, uh -huh. and he said, he said to me, it doesn't drive very well. I, I said, well, have you checked the tyres? He said, oh, I've had a couple change, and they're all different tyres. <laughs> I said to you, they've got to be the same tire. <laughs> he said, Well, well, these were cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. he, he was yeah. mentioning too that uh I think it was raining uh during the recording in the studio. You you were at somebody's house recording oh, yeah. this and it was raining and he, he was telling me he couldn't get around very good with his legs. And you guys were outside. You were holding an umbrella and also holding his hand. He said that would have been a wonderful uh, photo from behind. <laughs> yeah, it was. It would have been a Lauren Hardy thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, rem I, can, I remember it now. It was thick mud, pouring of rain. Right. Uh, we were walking back through this field felt like a field because mm -hmm. the studio we worked in was like 100 yards away from the main house. <laughs> oh, good times. And, and Michael Pinder was a great interview too. They call him, uh, was it Moon Boy? Because of uh, his love for, I guess, the uh, UFOs and things like that. Oh. Yeah. We, we Mike, and, Mike and I used to spend many, many hours uh, talking about philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, the universe, and uh, everything. It was a great, great thing to explore together. It was Zachariah Silchim and uh, a, a great author of uh, alternative things and. Uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, the, 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 when Mike left the band, for, Mike musically, it was incredible. Mm. Great arranger, great arranger. Uh, but I missed our conversations when, when yeah. he missed the band, you know. So, uh, so we still keep in touch, though. Good. Very good. I want to talk about your tour. Let's see. I think um, it's starting March 8th, if I'm not mistaken, in Norfolk. Uh, Connecticut, Infinity Hall, and then you go to New Jersey, and the 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 one that's going to be incredible is going to be the uh, the Flower Power Cruise, which has got what a lineup on that thing, man! 
yeah, I'm looking forward to the flower boat cruise. I hope it goes ahead. It's all sold out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I live because I know a lot of people on the cruise anyway. Yeah, uh, and I I like cruising, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, float, floating festivals. And for me, it's great because I love live music, and I love going to see other artists. So uh, uh, I'll be wandering around on the boat, uh, popping in and listening to all the other bands. You know, it's it's going to be great. You know, the, the Hollies are actually going to be on this one, which is very unusual because you don't get to see the Hollies much anymore. Um, my buddies, the Zombies, I know that those guys, I've, I, I just interviewed Rod not that long ago, Rod Argent on Zoom. He, he's such a great guy. Um, you got the um, Felix Cavalieri from the Rascals, the Guess Who, Jefferson Starship. Another buddy of mine, Jim McCarty from the Yardbirds, Grassroots. I mean, it just goes on and on. It's 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 Woodstock on the high seas, basically. It, it is. <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, the only thing is, I can't find any of my outfits from the sixties. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe your your wife kind of hid them away somewhere in the garage. <laughs> I'll, I'll think she burnt them. To be <laughs> Especially when you when you look at the photographs today. I know. Yeah, she doesn't want you looking like um, Austin Powers. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, real quick, I know you got to go. Your wine. Yeah. Uh, you have your own label. Uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, you have a Napa Red, a Red Bordeaux, um, a South African uh, Elgin, um, which, and these are all winners of gold medals and things like that. Where can you buy the wine? Is it, you buy it online or? Yeah, we've got a, we got a, a website uh, called chrisema.com. Okay. Uh, K R I S E M M A right dot com uh, and it's all, all on there and uh, on the cruise I I'll, I'll be selling some I think oh good uh, I think I'll do that uh, and um, yeah Christmas and um, I suppose if you go johnlodge dot com mm-hmm. you could get the route through to it as well but you know uh, on the last couple of years because of lockdown we've neglected the wine side of it because Mm -hmm. we can't travel you know you have to really go and blend these wines that's what's been good fun about it blending the wines and thinking oh i like this i like this taste let's sell this one and uh, it's been a lot of fun a lot of fun traveling I want to mention um, John Lodge, The Royal Affair and After. Uh, it's now available, and it's the new live album from John Lodge. Uh, you can purchase that at Amazon.com. You can also go to JohnLodge.com, um, The Royal Affair and After. Uh, for more information about John Lodge, you can go to his website at John Lodge, www.JohnLodge.com. He's also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. John, I and want to thank you so much. Thank you. And don't forget moodyblues.today.com. Exactly. I'm still, I'm still a moody blue. Keep That's right. Blue, music alive. It's the soundtrack of my life. So uh, moodyblues.today.com. Are you and Justin going to do anything in the future? That's wait and see, I, I, I guess. I, I, yeah, it's one of those things. I'm so wrapped up at the moment with right. everything else I'm doing. And uh uh, it, it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time, and uh, my guys in the band so they love the music. Mm-hmm. Um, when people love the music, it's free for it's sure. free for exactly. Well, John, enjoy Barbados, get some rest before the tour. <laughs> thank you very much, Ray, <laughs> and thank you for keeping the faith to all your uh, listeners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.